Okay, so going for a 10 minute and five second game. And, uh, let's see if we can practice some of the research. Let's attack the king. Nice, obvious, simple maneuver. Uh, let's just take the bishop off the board. No fancy airs or graces. The queen's no longer on a dark square, so we could look to attack the center. Queen being on the dark square means it couldn't come here. Put a check on the king. So let's go with the knight because the knight is looking to come out here. Gonna simply capture. Simple maneuver so far. Rushing the queen here might be a bit of an error because they could come down and take the pawn here. If they came and took the pawn there, we could take the pawn here. We're on the rook. If they decided to take here, our queen would be able to take their queen. So their rook has to do something. So their rook could come here because it's supported by the queen, which puts a little bit of pressure towards our king area. So we could then go and castle, getting the rook into the game. If the queen took the bishop, the rook would take the queen, and then the rook would take, and then they would get a back rank checkmate. So we're not going to follow that line. I'm going to develop the knight. So a bit of a com um, calculation there. It might have been wrong. I might have calculated it wrong, but it just feels that we lose out in that kind of picture. So knight's attacking here and the queen is attacking the pawn as well. So we could support with the queen or we could push the pawn up. Kind of stops us from being able to go and castle because the queen's probably going to come here and prevent that action. So I'm going to bring the queen up, supporting the pawn. Maybe looking to get the queen off the board with the x-ray through to the king. Let's go with the getting the queen off the board. Maybe looking for a tiny little fog here, but that's a little bit obvious, but it can happen. No, it's not playing them balls, so then we'll take. So we're in the mode of just capturing and capturing appropriately, you know, safely. So we could go and castle now. Is there anything else? There's going to be some pressure. Let's castle. Keep it nice and simple. I don't think there's any rush anywhere. I believe they'll be castling now. They've got these pawns in the center of the board looking to champion because they've got a pawn. Oh, they've gone early. So we could push onto the knight, but obviously the knight then comes and attacks. Bishop then can come and support. That looks a bit too arty for me. So we're in the capturing mode. So we'll capture, keep it nice and steady. Could x-ray through to their bishop. And get these rooks basically lining up against this pawn. This pawn's weak, so we're going to have to push this pawn up. It all seems nice and simplified. So are they actually going to move the knight then? To attack the bishop, looks like they are going to do that. We don't want to take the knight because the bishop's got a power base then all the way through here. So, weakest pawn is this, so let's push this pawn. So they're attacking the bishop, they're still what they're wanting to own this diagonal. And don't want to give it to them. We could bring our bishop here, baiting more pawns down. I don't think there's any point in bringing it here because it's just hiding away. It can come here, it's protecting this square. It can come here, it's still protecting that square. I think it's more active here. Potential for baiting more pawns, and maybe sitting here comfortably. So it's gone onto the white squares, attacking our unprotected knight, and behind the knight is the pawn. So we could bring our rook into the center of the board. And as we know, Rooks don't have any place in the center of the board, unless it's to your advantage. It doesn't really look advantageous bringing the rook up here, but we have to do something. The bishop could support by bringing, going to this position here. So I think we'll do that for now. This knight's probably going to start moving so that this pawn can put pressure onto the bishop. So maybe we can slide here. They'll want to be moving this bishop out of the way. 
so that then this rook is supporting this pawn pushing down onto the bishop yeah so it started to move okay so has it moved to the right place or not we did, we did say we we're going to come here so this knight is going to be supporting the pawn pushing down onto the bishop our bishop has got this pawn but it's protecting this knight so i think we're going to have to maneuver to a different place if we go here we'll no longer be able to protect the um rook knight hmm right yes that's a tricky situation we put ourselves into maybe we should have just gone with a simple rook maneuver if we go here pawn drops bishop has to move if we go here the rook gets the um, knight well how do we play this then this is one of those situations where I can't win unless of course I can protect my bishop with the knight but I can't do that can I attack something higher with the knight I can't do that everything is on a white square apart from his dark square bishop could the knight take this pawn pawn takes rook takes two pawns for a knight but then his rook takes this pawn and then we take his knight I'm thinking that's the only thing I can see I mean, he could just simply take our bishop here, can't he? So I, I didn't put that in the <laughs> I didn't put that in the calculation. So we're going to be pieced down anyway. All I was focusing on was him taking, taking, but he can just take the bishop. Yeah. So we created a bit of a situation for ourselves there. I'm going to take with a check on the king, attack the knight. The knight's running home free, sorry. Yeah. But we do have more pawns. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got one pawn extra out of that situation. Let's push this pawn up. So in my brain, I'm trying to rationalize it two pawns for a, a minor piece but it's only one pawn at the end of the day so they're utilizing their piece I'm going to just attack the knight see where it's going it's probably getting supported by the pawn As we always say, just because they do have more pieces doesn't necessarily mean they've won the game. You still have to find those appropriate positions. And these are the types of games that I think, for my own development, I need. So that then I can start widening my calculation process for better position. It's not saying I'm going to win at all in any way, shape. I shouldn't win. I shouldn't gain any advantages because they do have an extra piece. So it's have, it's gone back. It didn't have to go back. It could have supported itself. We could look to do the simple thing of doubling the rooks here. And just go with the simple doubling of the rook because that's their power base. Simply just goes back so we don't really have that much strength. Then we can attack here. Let's reduce down. Hit the check. And let's see what we can do from here. Um, I think, I, for me, I think I'm going to feel comfortable bringing the knight back, rook back, rather than it being around the back over here. I'm going to bring it here, supporting the weakest pawn. Knight's jumping here. Wants to get into the game. <laughs> exact move. Going to attack it. Smaller piece attacking higher piece. He's looking to come for this pawn, isn't he really? If we push here, then his rook's coming here to attack this pawn. So if we can do slow incremental steps up. Okay, they're really maneuvering with this knight. I'm hoping they're losing tempo in terms of getting an improved position. If we went behind this pawn and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, 
Does that give them a bit of pressure? I think ownership, owning this file is good. It's just, I want to be pushing this and this. I'm gonna go behind it. He can come and own. The king's got a bit of space. And try and try and utilize these pawns as best possible. Let's just push here, supporting this one. Stopping the knight from jumping here anyway. It's not going here, so again, dancing around. Hopefully we might win some tempo, you know, you never know. To get these pawns pushed up while the knight's on the other side. Oh, okay, yeah, we can still continue, let's go. Okay, so while the knight's away, let's see if we can get these pushed up. Because obviously he's going to get a two-on-one on each of these pawns, but we can try ah, he's, he's moved in now. Right, so, shall we push this first to stop the knight jumping here? Oh, that's not good, is it? <laughs> if we push up, let's push up. And we can push again, but the knight is protecting this square. I bet you there's something, because we could eventually just go here, couldn't we? And then get the rook off the board, the knight off the board. So we're going to push. But maybe the knight goes in front of the pawn. Let's go and try it anyway. We'll probably just go in and block. He's not gone unblocked. Okay, so we'll get the knight off the board. So they're just plus one now at the moment. So we've improved our position. Could attack this pawn, but he's just going to come down, put checks on our king. Our king can kind of hide away. So let's attack it's unprotected. So we'll just see. King probably comes to protect it. So this type of game, we're kind of just showing that just because you had more pieces on the board doesn't mean necessarily that you've won the game. We've got it down to the point where basically they're just plus one, which is, you know, the pawn. And plus one can win the games. So it's, but it's nice to practice these things. So the king does come down. So what is the idea next? I think we want to try and get the king in. And I don't want to fall foul though of getting trapped. He's got this pawn that's going to push down. Um, let's move the king, get the king into the game. At least we've got another piece up there. Yeah, so he's got the check on, so going to hide here and see how that works for us. So he's supporting because the pawn's going to be pushing down, so I'm going to bring our rook here. Mm. So we could push the pawn, he comes onto our king, come down. I feel like we're going to push the pawn if he comes in the taxes, which is going to be the natural thing with the rook. Don't think we're going here because he's going to move his king, then come down here. Might be a checkmate, but that might be a slow process. Yeah, so they've naturally gone and attacked. So knee-jerk reaction is to go here with the king. And then his king moves out of the way. But then we can put a check on. So the fear factor is that if we go there, then they can come here. Then we take, then they take. And then our king ends up going up here. But then he gets some sort of checkmate because we can't move. But it does look long term. Can't hit there. So I'm actually going to risk it for a biscuit. It does look a bit long term. They might just be solely interested in trying to get this pawn down. Maybe getting rid of this pawn, maybe pushing here, pushing here, then he's got two. Yeah, so if he pushes there, and if we pushed up, then he takes, then we take, then he's got two past pawns linked as well. So that's probably the move they're going to make. So do we fall for that and just might as well just take to even it up? Oh, he's going for it. He's going for it. So he's going to get the passer on there. So we could put a check on the king. 
to put a check on the king, the king isn't going to go here, is he? Because he's going to get a check on him. It's going to go here. So it goes there. I think we're going to have to take the chance and just take, and then the pawn takes, and he's got a passer which we have to contend with. And then this pawn drops down onto the at some point. Mm. Interesting. What would, if I was doing this back, playing this back on Eval Barry, of course, it simply, would, I'm sure it would just take push, check, king goes here. King goes there. King goes there. I'm not liking it because he's just. Yeah, there's no way of me stopping that pawn. In fact, there's no way of me stopping either of the pawns if, if I take it. What? He's taken. Oh, okay. My king's going to be too slow then, is it? So if I take. Then he takes. My king's going to have to go backwards. King's going to have to go backwards. His king comes down. We push this pawn up. He pushes down. Uh, we push up. He pushes down. Oh, I don't like it. Yeah, he's, he's got one extra pawn, which is too much for us. It could be a draw, but I don't. I can't see it. Do we trade? Just trade. Just trade and just bring it down. Well, at least we got it down to one pawn. Let's hit the king. Got it down to one pawn. But that pawn is going to be their saving grace, isn't it? Trade, takes, takes, no. Push up. Push. And, oh, I've got Zugs wanged. Damn it. Yeah, I go here, he comes and supports the pawn. I go here, he comes round the back. And then I can't come back here again. So if I go up, then he takes the pawn. I go up, he takes my other pawn. I come across, he pushes down. Oh, terrible. Oh, we came so far. Come across, he comes down. And there's no way of stopping that pawn because his king's just um, taking it down. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, well, we'll have to see what skills they've got. It's going to take all my pawns off. Is my king going... What? I don't know if that was... So he's going back, we go up, then he comes down for our pawn, yeah, either way it's still the same picture isn't it, it's still the same picture, I go and attack his pawn, he comes down and attacks our pawn, I take it, and then he's, he's just basically supporting his pawn all the way down, my king can't stop it, oh, back in the same situation again, let's go. So close yet so far. Yeah, so he can just come round the back here. And it's the same same situation again. Yeah, no matter which way I go. <laughs> Dear me. He just goes here, and then he can just bring this pawn down. Oh, it's getting worse. Could go here. Then he pushes. Then I go here. Oh, scandalous. Gonna go here. They might fluff it, you never know. No, they're not fluffing it. My king's gonna be down here. But I'm not sure. He's he's actually done a drawn position. I think. See, this can't. 
this can't get promoted, can it? Yeah, this would it can't it would have been better if it was on this file. So we've kind of got a draw out of this. That is shocking. We we should not have got a draw out of that. I suppose and what you know what I'm gonna say? It doesn't really matter how many pieces you've got on the board, if they're not in the right places, then they're tantamount to being useless. And that's what's happened in this game here. Stalemate. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Brilliant. Not the best gameplay, but these types of games are the games that really should be shown more often. And really chuffed that we're researching the answer to chess process. And within each of the games, it's not all glory and fancy, fancy things and really strategical, fantastic play. Um, the real games are where you do make mistakes, you do make errors, you do make blunders. And it's how you come back from those games and really learn to enjoy the games a little bit more. And in this game here, obviously the opponent made some big errors all you know towards the end game but you have to rely on the fact that well sometimes people do make mistakes 75 percent of um games uh, are kind of blunderous so you can just hold on and then um, hope that the blunder factor comes in good game 